time to meet the men from the ministry. Join us for another canter down the corridors of power with Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham, and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. The General Assistance Department helps any ministry that's overloaded. It's a tough, demanding life, but in a world of problems and uncertainties, Lennox Brown and Lamb rely on Secretary Mildred to keep a grip on essentials. Raise a cheer, tea is here. Oh, whatever's the matter? Matter, Mildred? You're both working. And it's only 11.15. This is a national emergency. With the cost of food and the economic crisis, people must grow their own vegetables. Yes, we're producing a pamphlet to urge them to do so and give them some useful hints. Like, make sure your potatoes have plenty of eyes. That way they'll see you through the week. <laughs> Our manifestos will be pushed through every letterbox in the country. The Prime Minister's behind the whole scheme. If people work on gardens and allotments, they'll not only help our balance of payments, they'll keep fit as well. There's a personal message from the PM at the top of the pamphlet. Look, Nancy. A healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Does the Prime Minister do any gardening at number 10? Oh, yes. He grows cabbages and leeks in his window box. <laughs> now, when we've finished this pamphlet, Mildred, get it to the government printers. We need 50 million copies. Bloody hell, sir. Oh, and I believe the permanent undersecretary's got another job for you. He said he'd be dropping in this morning. Sir Gregory, oh, dear. Do you suppose that's more work, one? Oh, probably, yes. And being Monday morning, no doubt he'll be grumpy. Oh, there you are, you two. Oh, good morning, Sir Grumpy. Bill, Sir Gregory. <laughs> Do uh, which, come in, sir. I am in, Lennox Brown. Don't be so obsequious. Your wish is my command, sir. Now, listen carefully, both of you. Now, I hope you've got on with that pamphlet job. There's another assignment for you, helping the Minister of Defence. The Minister of Defence? I saw him on TV last night. Yes, well, he needs our assistance. His minions are overstretched. I thought he was walking awkwardly. <laughs> quiet, Lamb, and listen. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, now, the Ministry of Defence had problems. They've had to take on masses of new staff to cope with these defence cuts. Indeed, sir. And as the old staff are having to train them, no one's free to do any work. So you're held the mic. In uh, what particular area, sir? Well, technical development. Oh. The naval boffins have come up with an amazing new gadget. It's a frogman detector, which you lower over the side of the ship. It can pick up any man in the area. Heaven knows how. Perhaps it says, hello, sailor. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Larry? I didn't say anything to me. Good. Well, try and make it a habit. <laughs> now, this weapon is top secret, Lennox Brown. It's been given the code name Priority. Priority, sir. Get shush, man. Keep your voice down. I told you it's top secret. Priority, sir. That's better. Yes, a priority has been tested at this moment at the underwater warfare establishment on Highgate Ponds. Highgate Ponds? <laughs> exactly. That's where you step in. <laughs> I want one of you there all week, keeping an eye on development, and pass on instructions for use to the Ministry of Defence. Very good, sir. We'll deal with this, never fear. There is also a domestic matter. It's been decided that the Ministry is due for new furniture, desk chairs, cupboards, and so on. Some of the old stuff is showing signs of wear. That's very true, sir. Yes. I was sitting at my desk the other day when one of my legs fell off. <laughs> and I had to prop an umbrella under the bottom. <laughs> my chair's just as bad. You should see my sagging seat. That won't be necessary. <laughs> now, there'll be new equipment all round, and the officers will be repainted. We, we want a new, modern image. Ah, now, I think I can help you with that, I read an article on interior design in a magazine at my father's. Yes. Might I suggest some? Tangerine walls, lemon curtains, perhaps, and an orange carpet? You may not, Lennox Brown. I'm talking about decor, not fruit salad. Oh. Now, the walls will be painted the regulation colours, off-white and khaki. I see. Now, as there's so much to be done, I suggest Lamb works at the underwater warfare establishment, and you, Lennox Brown, can get rid of all the old furniture. Get rid of the furniture, sir? Well, obviously. We've got to make room for the new stuff, which arrives on Sunday. So get all the old stuff out by Saturday. I'll do my best, sir. Now, go through the office thoroughly. Yes, sir. Get rid of everything old and useless. Yes, sir. Uh, with the notable exception of Lamb, of course. <laughs> He's expected at Highgate Ponds. Thank you, Sir Gregory. <laughs> I'm glad 
glad you rang, Bernard. It's been a dreary morning. Tell you the truth, it's been a dreary week. Mr. Lamb's been at this underwater place. You wouldn't think you'd miss him, but I do. He's so quiet without him falling off his chair and tripping over things. No, Mr. Lennox Brown's been here. He's been going through his drawers. Yeah, you know, searching in his drawers to see if he's got anything worth keeping. <laughs> these new cabinets we're getting are ever so small, apparently. I don't know where I'm going to keep the important things, like my hair rollers and Mr. Lamb's marmalade. <laughs> oh, look here, I better hang up. I think Mr. LB's coming. All right, love, I'll see you lunchtime. Oh, morning, Mr. Morning, Mr. Lennox Brown. Yes. Oh, now you look very smart today. A new suit and a flower in your buttonhole. Yes. <laughs> well, I thought I'd look my best for these dealers who'll be coming to bid for the furniture. So. You'll be a sort of auctioneer, will you? I play one dealer against the other, see, and end up getting a very good price. Ah, yeah. Mm. Well, I put an advert in last night's paper, like you said, sir. Good. Look, here's a copy here. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. sale of top-grade ministry furniture. Dealers may come and place orders... All will be promptly executed. <laughs> yes, well, you've got the general idea. <clears throat> and I've emptied all the desks and cupboards, sir. That pile of papers can be thrown away. Oh, wait, are you quite sure they're out of date, Mildred? That file says urgent memos from the Prime Minister, not yet dealt with. Well, I looked inside, sir, and they're all signed by Mr Gladstone. <laughs> Perhaps they could go then, yes. Mr. Crawley next door's been very ruthless. He's been putting memos in the waste paper basket as soon as his secretary's typed them. Oh, we're not all like creepy Crawley, thank heavens. No. Well, let's get all the rubbish out of here, Mildred. Those furniture dealers will be clamouring at our door any minute. <laughs> And I ought to be off soon. And of course they'll come, Mildred. They're just playing hard to get, that's all. Leaving it to the last minute, you see, in the hope of getting bargains. Well, I wish I had your confidence, sir. Well, I mean, they must come, mustn't they? I mean, other, otherwise, how are we going to get rid of this furniture? It's, it's Friday evening and the new stuff comes on Sunday. You are worried, I can tell. Oh, how? You're stroking your moustache with a teaspoon and stirring your tea with a comb. <laughs> this will be the dealers now. Come in, all of you. Form an order with you. Mr. Lennox Brown. Oh, there's only one of you. Yes, well, we'll come in anyway. My card. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Wheeler the dealer. <laughs> I buy old junk and sell valuable antiques. <laughs> yes, that's me, Boyle. I hear you have some office furniture to sell. Well, yes. Yes, we might be persuaded to part with some of these exquisite pieces, you know, price. Is that so? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, we're able to offer a hundred cabinets filing, two hundred chairs swivelling, and a hundred desks writing, all in condition outstanding. Uh, like uh, this lot in here? Quite, yes. A superb collection of first-class items. What I might almost call... A load of junk. A load of junk. Pardon? <laughs> Rubbish, all of it. Some of these things came out of the ark. Well, they have an antique quality, certainly. I mean, take this table. Oh, not on your life. It's patched up with sticky tape, look you. Well, yeah, that's to keep the legs on, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like I said, boy, oh, it's a load of junk. I'll give you, um, I'll give you 4 50 for the lot. What, for this lot here? No, no, for the whole lot. 4 50 for everything? That's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Very well, then. Good night to you. Uh, wait, uh, Mr. Wheeler, there's no need to be hasty. Um, well, you'll get other offers, won't you? No. I, I mean, uh, no doubt we will. Yes, but the fact is, you see, Mr. Wheeler, I, I, I rather like the look of you, you know. Yes, yes. I've always got on well with the Scots. Yes. <laughs> you see, I'd like to do business with you. Right. I said 450 the lot. Yes, but it's not very much, is it? I mean... Four hundred and fifty pounds goes nowhere these days. Who said four hundred and fifty? I meant four pounds fifty pence. Four pounds fifty pence? Oh, Mr. Lennox Brown, your glasses have steamed up. <laughs> and then I'm doing you a favour. Look, you better take it, sir. There's no one else. Uh, yes. Well, uh, Mr. Wheeler, I'm in a desperate, uh, uh, desperately generous mood. Now, I'll let you have the lot for four pounds fifty if you'll take it all away tomorrow. If you'll pay four quid for the use of my van. Oh, glory. All right, Mr. Wheeler. Done. Yes, sir, you certainly have been. Well, at least I've got rid of the furniture. Yeah, for fifty pence. <laughs> I'm back, Juan. 
one. Uh, oh, hello, Mr. Crawley. Evening, Mr. Lamb. I think they've all gone. Uh, Mr. Lennox Brown passed me in the what's-his-name. Oh, I've been over at Highgate all week, uh, but I think I left my umbrella here on Monday. I um, hope you don't mind my being in your office. I was looking for some blotting paper. I've been working on a top-secret weapon. Very hush-hush. I'm not allowed to mention it to anyone. Oh, no, of course not. It's a thing called priority for detecting enemy frogmen. (laughs) I've got the operating notes here. Oh, you'll have to keep it under your what's name. Hmm. These instructions have to be fixed to each device, then stripped off before it's used. How does it work? Well, it's all written here. Stand upside down, holding bottom steady, then you... Plunge it into the water. Oh. I have to deliver this to the Ministry of Defence. But there'll be nobody there now, Mr. Lamb. They've got a rule. No wars to break out after five o'clock Fridays. <laughs> well, I'll lock it up in the filing cabinet and take it across on Monday. Yeah, well, I'd better be off. Friday night's my what's-his-name night. Is it really? <laughs> well, thanks for the blotting paper. Cheery bye. Yeah, cheery bye. Goodbye, Mr. Crawley. Oh, now, where on earth did I leave my umbrella? Perhaps it's in the safe with my plimsolls. Oh, hello, Mr. Lamb. I thought you'd gone home, Mildred. No, I'm still working on that grow-your-own-food thing. Mr. Elby said he'd leave the pamphlet here for me to take to the printers. I see. Well, my brolly's not in the safe. Where can it be? Oh, what a blooming week we've had here. Ah, here it is, in the umbrella stand. (laughs) That's odd. Elby must have mixed it up with his golf clubs. I haven't time to chat, Mildred. I must go. It's my night for the laundrette. It's all right for some. By Jove, this, this new furniture is splendid, isn't it? My chair's got a really marvellous swivel. Woo! Uh, steady, too. Don't you make yourself sick again. I'll do it again, then. No, st- stop it. He'll be ill. Look, what about these new drawers? They open and close at the touch of a finger. Remember how those old drawers wouldn't shut? Oh, I do indeed. <laughs> Especially that big one. Yeah. <laughs> we had to put Mr. Lamb's head against it, and you and I pulled <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like a blooming old battering ram. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, we are here. I'm talking of old rams. <clears throat> Hello, Sir Gregor. How are you, sir? Well, what do you think of the, the new office furniture? Uh, very comfortable, Sir Gregor, yes. Especially that poof in the corner. Yes. Well, the old things cost us a packet, of course, but we'll get a lot of that back on the old furniture. No doubt you've got a good price, Lennox Brown. Uh, I've been thinking of taking a spot of leaves on it. Uh, <laughs> what exactly did you get? What exactly did I get? Uh, yes, well, now, uh, that, that's a very good question, Sir Gregory. Yeah, 5,000 pounds or so, I dare say. Uh, not quite, sir. Well, of course, these are difficult times. You're going to tell me you've got only 4,500? Oh, uh, I'll put that and make a cup of tea. I didn't get 4,500, sir. I can say that in all honesty. I got slightly less, I must have been. What? Well, how much did you get, man? Fifty. Fifty pounds for all those items? Yeah, not You can't mean it. Uh, No, not 50 pounds. (laughs) I I knew you weren't serious, sir. 50 pence, sir. (laughs) Oh, I see. Well, that's it. What? 50 pence? You sold all the furniture for 50 miserable pence? Here you are, sir. And I did get a receipt. Be quiet! (laughs) You half-witted, bird-brained nincompoop! I can tell you're not pleased, Sir Gregory. (laughs) But you know, sir... It was a load of old junk. I'm nonsense. It, it, it was first-class stuff. Ooh, if I stay here any longer, I'll, I'll do your mischief. I'd better go. Thank you, sir. Ah, stupid, <laughs> blundering moron. Fifty pence. Yeah. I wonder if Sir Gregory was born a rude bully, or did he have to have training? <laughs> oh, I don't know why I put up with it, too. Sometimes I think I'll leave. But one, your pension, your luncheon vouchers... That's why I put up with it, yes. Seth, call from the Ministry of Defence. Why haven't they received the instructions for priority, the anti-frogman thing? Oh, well, you're dealing with that, too. What's happened to it? Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. I'm taking it to the Ministry of Defence later this morning. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Yes. I bet you thought I'd lost it. Well, I haven't. I put it in the top drawer of the filing cabinet on Friday evening. But, Mr. Lamb, all them cabinets have been sold. The dealer took them on Saturday. Really? What? But he couldn't have done. He mustn't have done. Sure. You've done it again. A top secret document. 
sent to the junkyard. No, I, I can't. Be. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. we must go to Wheeler's place at once and get it back. Yeah. Now, two. Yeah. And pull yourself yeah. together. Yeah. Or oh, Sir Gregory will pull you apart. No. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Ah, yes. We're inquiring about some ex-government filing cabinets, Mr. Wheeler. Oh, you've come to the right place, boy. I just got hold of some grand stuff. A bit pricey, mine, but marvellous value. Uh, no, 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 no. We don't want to buy cabinets. Uh, I sold them to you, remember? But we left something in one of them. Yourself. Well, if you left something in one of them, yes. you do want to buy it. Otherwise, you'll never get it back, will you? We don't want the cabinet, Mr. Wheeler. We just pop into your warehouse and retrieve the documents. Oh, you can't do that, boy. My warehouse is private property, see? Can't have every Tom, Dick and Ivor walking around. <laughs> no, no. You buy the cabinet, then you can look inside it. That's blackmail. We'll have to do it, man. That document's absolutely vital. Oh, very well, Mr. Wheeler. We'll buy the cabinet in question. Oh, very wise, lovely cabinets yes, they yes, are. All right, all right. Uh, just one snag, though. Which one is it you want? They all look the same to me. Yeah, they are the same on the outside, but we'll soon find the one with the document. Oh, there's a problem. Like I said, I can't let you in the warehouse. Uh, fire regulations, see? It looks like you'll have to buy them all. Buy them all? But to get back one piece of paper? You can have the lot for a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds? Thank you. That's a deal, then. <laughs> Listen, wait, wait a minute. On Friday, you said those cabinets were junk. Oh, indeed. But the, the market fluctuates, you see. Look, you. Oh, it's no use. We'll have to pay up. Give me the ministry checkbook, too. And uh, you'll want all the cabinets delivered to the ministry? Thank you. My pleasure. That'll be an extra 50 quid. It's just as well I'm not a violent man. The cabinets are here, Mildred. Mr. Lamb's going through them now. He'll find the document eventually. Oh, well, yeah, but a thousand pounds. Well, thank heavens it's only public money. Leonard Brown! Who? Oh, I mean, over here, sir. What the devil's going on, man? The front hall is filled with old filing cabinets. The hall porter's missing. He's probably lost underneath. I, I heard some angry muttering and... Things do tend to get on top of him, so yes. <laughs> but why are the cabinets there? You're supposed to have sold them. Ah, I did sell them, sir, but you seemed displeased, you see. I mean, you told me it was first-class stuff, so I bought them all back. You bought them back? For how much? Twenty-five pence? Oh, did you make a fool of yourself and pay the whole fifty? <laughs> Actually, sir, I paid slightly in excess of that. Uh, not more than a pound, surely. <laughs> the cabinets cost one thousand and fifty pounds, sir. One thousand and fifty. One thousand and fifty. I don't believe it. Would you believe one thousand and forty? Gregory, you've gone all white, except for that vein on your forehead. Don't gnash your teeth, sir. You'll spoil them. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. You'll answer me one further question, Lennox Brown, before I hammer you into the ground like a tent peg. Another question, Sir Gregory, yes. Why is Lamb in the hall, stripped to the waist and running from one filing cabinet to another like a demented antelope? Well, we've lost a right... Uh, and uh, that is to say, he's very sentimental, sir. Right? Oh, yes, yes. He's trying to find his own cabinet. Yes, you see, it's the one he danced on on coronation night. <laughs> I suppose it's all my fault, really. Oh, come, come, sir. I should have fired you both years ago. Well, it's not too late. Ministry staff aren't easily sacked, but they'll give you the boot when I tell them you've wasted this ministry money. Sir Gregory, it didn't actually waste it, you know. Huh? No, you see, those cabinets are metal, and I've heard that the price of metal's about to rocket. Well, really? So I've actually done the government a favour. Each of those cabinets will be soon... Worth a fortune. Well, are you... Are you sure about it? Oh, that? yes, sir. It's a very hot tip, sir. And it's highly confidential, of course, you see, sir. I mean, it wouldn't do for people to buy up these cabinets for private profit. Oh, no. No, 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 of course. No. Well, I, I must be off, then, it's right. There you go, sir. Uh, no, one or two little... One or two little things to do. Yes. No, and, uh... Have the Ministry of Defence on about that new weapon. They haven't received the notes yet. Oh, don't worry, sir. Yes, they'll, they'll get the document shortly. Well, they'd they? better. Or there'll be questions in the house. Oh, uh, shall I go and help Mr. Lamb look? No, 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 Mildred. He's bound to found it by now. Well, it's not there. I've searched every drawer and every cabinet and I can't find it. It's gone. 
the Ministry of Defence wanted at once. And another thing, we sold Wheeler a hundred cabinets, but there are only 97 downstairs. What? So he's diddleless, eh? Mm. Well, the paper's in one of the other three. Mildred, get Wheeler on the phone at once. I'm already dialing, sir. Oh, Here girl. you are, swinging. Good, 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 good. We let the dealer. Lennox Brown here at the Ministry. We just bought back a hundred filing cabinets, but you've only delivered 97. You said you'd buy all the filing cabinets in the warehouse. Well, there were 97 of them. But I sold you a hundred. Oh, indeed, but I sold three of them on Saturday. You didn't tell us that. You didn't ask, did you? Mr. Wheeler, who did you sell those cabinets to? Oh, well, I can't divulge professional information about my clients. You can't? Yeah, well, at a price I can. Oh, glory. Uh, very well, Mr. Wheeler. I must know where the cabinets are. Uh, all right. I'll pay for the information. And now, where did the cabinets go? Well, now, the first one I sold to Mr. Snowden. Uh, Snowden, the metal disposal yard. Yes, I see, I see, yes. And the second? Yeah, oh, well, that would be another five pounds, look you. <laughs> very well, but where did it go? That one I sold to Mr. Snowden, too. Are you offering a fiver for the third one? Well, I've no option, have I? Very well. For fifteen pounds, I sold the third one to Mr. Snowden. He bought all three, see? Oh. This will be Mr. Snowden. Now, just tell him what's happened calmly and simply. Right? Yes, uh, you've got to help Mr. Snowden. I'm in awful trouble because of this weapon, you see, and it's very big, and I stuck it on top of my cabinet, but they removed my drawers on Saturday, so I couldn't give it to them, and there'll be questions in the house, and if you haven't got it, we definitely have had it. Oh. <laughs> Dear me, you, you, you are in a bad way. Mr. Snowden, now, you've recently bought three old ministry filing cabinets. Yes, that's right. Um, that's one of them on my desk. On your desk? Yes, we um, crush them down, you see, in that machine over there. <laughs> they end up the size of a matchbox. Mr. Snowden, have you crushed all three cabinets? Oh, no, we've just done the one so far. Oh, huh? oh, the second one's been crushed now. <laughs> there you are, that's another paperweight. Oh, no, really, yes, really, they're, really, rather, not... they're rather charming, aren't they? Just a minute. That block on your desk is grey. That's right, and it uh, shows the one we've just crushed. Then we're all right, Mum. The document was in a green cabinet. Oh, thank heavens. Your third cabinet is green, Mr. Snowden. Green, yes. Oh, a pretty colour. It reminds me of the wife's teeth. <laughs> And that one you haven't crushed. Hmm? Oh, no, no, no. We're saved, one. No, that one I've sold. You've sold it? That's right. But, yes, to, to a chap from the ministry. Said his name was, um, oh dear, he said his name was Pitkin. <laughs> Sir Gregory, uh, ugly, tall, purple. That's the fellow. <laughs> oh, my word, he was desperate to buy it. Oh, yes, he, he'd heard the price of metal was going to rocket, you see. Oh, all, all nonsense, of course, but I was able to charge him 500 pounds. <coughs> Any luck with that hairpin, Mildred? Well, I think it's coming, sir. Mm. But I don't like it, burgling Sir Gregory's office and breaking into his cabinet. Well, none of us like it, Mildred, but what else can we do? We've got to get that document. I feel like one of them Americans in that water closet affair. <laughs> water gate, Mildred. <laughs> Please, hurry, come on. Oh, oh, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's open, sir. Is there a paper in there? Yes, sir, just one. Uh, that must be it, then. The instructions for using the frogman detector. Is it headed priority? No, sir. It's headed grow your own food. A healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Well, give me that. This is our food-growing pamphlet. You were supposed to take this to the printers. Well, I took something to the printers. Oh, good grief. You must have switched them. You took the instruction for using priority. A top secret document. And you've had 50 billion copies printed and pushed through everyone's letterbox. <laughs> you, you see what that means? Yeah. It contracepts the official secrets act. <laughs> Not only that, think what people will do. That paper was supposed to be stacked to the device and removed before use. What does it say to? Oh, something like priority, vital government order, tear around outside, then strip off. Stand upside down, holding bottom steady, then plunge into mortar. <laughs> <laughs> there was
were amazing scenes throughout Britain today following mass distribution of a new government pamphlet. In most areas, householders have been tearing around outside their homes and stripping off all their clothes. <laughs> Many have also been standing on their heads before plunging into the nearest river or canal. <laughs> Nude housewives in Croydon were rounded up by police, but an inspector said he was unable to pin anything on them. <laughs> In London, stockbrokers and other businessmen ran naked from their offices and jumped into the ice-cold River Thames. As a result, city affairs were reduced in magnitude and many assets were temporarily frozen. <laughs> it's no use trying to escape. We've both got to face the music. But when Sir Gregory catches us, it'll be funeral music. He'll kill us first and then give us the sass. Now then, you two. Oh, Sigurdi, I thought you should know the Prime Minister's delighted. Delighted, sir? Oh, that running and stripping and swimming did wonders for the nation's fitness. And in his own words, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I'm rather pleased myself that that tip of yours about uh, metal going up. I have bought all those old cabinets that were standing around in the hall. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. I may have exaggerated slightly. No, ah, they're all being moved to my country house. My wife's not pleased, but she'll be grateful in the long run. Hedge against inflation, eh? Ha, ha, ha. Can't go wrong, what? <laughs> what? I can't believe it. Sir, there's too many here from MR5. MI5, Mildred? Well, that business with the secret document. They said something about high treason. They come to take you away. Oh, no, 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 Muddling through as the men from the ministry were Richard Murdoch and Derek Guiler. Also featured were Norma Ronald, Ronald Battery, and John Graham. The programme was written by Edward Taylor and John Graham and produced by Edward Taylor. Mm -hmm.